Hello my fellow handicappers, this is Weekend Handicapper from WeekendHandicapper.com. In this video we are going to provide picks and analysis for the 2021 Fountain of Youth Stakes at Gulfstream Park, one of my favorite derby prep races. I love following South Florida and Gulfstream Park's derby trail campaigns. I look forward to it every single year. I love it. And for good reason. I think there's like 13 derby winners have raced in the Fountain of Youth Stakes. So it, it traditionally, there's a good chance that the Derby winner could be coming through the Fountain of Youth Stakes and uh, Gulfstream Park. So, your good reason. This race is going to be ran on Saturday, February 27th. Uh, it's race number 14. We got a field of 10, and they're going a mile and a 16th on the dirt. So, it's a good Derby prep race. Hopefully it's a good, fun, competitive race and one that we can make some money on. So let's take it one by one, each of these horses, um, and then I'll give you my picks and who, how I'm going to bet this race at the very end. Also, don't forget we have uh, other derby prep races, derby trail races uh, this weekend, Friday, uh, February 26th at, at uh, Turfway Park. We have the John... Uh, Battaglia Memorial, that field doesn't look like it compares at all to this field in the Fountain of Youth. And we also got on Saturday, uh, February 27th, uh, the Southwest Stakes at Oak Long, Oak Long, Oak Lawn Park. For my money, I think some of the better campaigns, when I say campaigns, that means you see the derby horses or, or, uh, on the trail to the Kentucky Derby horses running in in the same uh, track. So I think for my money, Gulfstream Park and Oaklawn Park have had the best, consistent, most competitive uh, derby prep races with some really good horses that emerge from it. Uh, gosh, I remember back Smarty Jones and then Big Brown, Smarty Jones at Oaklawn Park, Big Brown at Gulfstream Park. Now, I know Santa Anita in Southern California produces a lot of derby winners, for, for sure. But in terms of competitiveness and big fields and competitive fields, it's to me, it's Gulfstream Park or Oaklawn Park as far as derby prep races, as far as enjoying them uh, and looking forward to it. All right. So here we go. Finally, right? <laughs> to, to the uh, race analysis number one drain the clock five to one draws the rail but i think that's a good thing i think uh it's advantageous it looks like currently to to be on the inside at gulfstream park so i think number one drain the clock drawn at uh post position definitely is a plus it's undefeated so it's the winner of the swell stakes or the swell race but it's never raced a route. But I, I'm not worried about that because I, I think it's bred to go, go the distance. The trainer's very good. The trainer's in a zone. They're having a really good uh, meet. And it's been, been hot lately. And he does a good job with first time at route, getting his horses to stretch out. So to a route. So definitely a contender is the number one drain the clock. Number two, prime factor. My gosh, I was so disappointed. This was my, I wouldn't have thought it would have been that low odds. I think it was like six to five when they left the gate in the Holy Bull. Very disappointing. I think it came in third, burned a lot of money that day for Todd Pletcher, uh, which trains the horse. Should you give this horse another chance? It's five to one today. Uh, I would say so because it draws, again, on the inside. So that's a, that's a plus. Certainly included in your Zactus trifectas and your superfectas, number two prime factor. I'm always fascinated by horses like this. They were the heavy favorite, got hammered at the windows, threw a dud, threw a dud in that race in the Holy Bull last time. Uh, yeah, I finished third, but still, that horse, most people thought was going to win. Do we give up on them or do we give them another chance at better odds? So, I think give that horse another chance at better odds. Five to one morning line. Number three, so subtle. 
Here we got a long shot, 20 to 1 morning line. Broke his maiden on January 2nd. Now he's stepping up in class. Uh, it's going to be a hard task to ask this horse to beat this field, I think. Uh, but I don't think it's a uh, toss out uh, as a long shot. Uh, I would use underneath this horse, so subtle. So maybe include in your Zactus, Trifectus, Superfectus. Number four, Fire at Will. I have a soft spot in my heart for Fire at Will. It's seven to two morning line today for Mike Maker. But the reason I got a soft spot, this was one of the keys to me cashing a nice pick four on Breeders' Cup Day at Keeneland uh, in 2020. It was, he, he, he ran a great race in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. Uh, and man, was 30 to one when he did it. To have a 30 to one horse in your pick four, that creates some separation and creates some good payouts. So I think that pick three paid like, uh, well, I know it did. I don't know exactly how much, but I know it was $3,000 and something for 50 cents or, or um, 6,000 something if you had it for a dollar. So that was one of the keys to me cashing that nice pick four, uh, man. So I have a soft spot in my heart for Fire at Will. Fire at Will's made me some nice money uh, here lately, but we are talking, it's a new year, new day, new track surface. This horse is usually racing on the turf, uh, just like it did when it won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. Now we're switching surfaces. It's a different year. It's a different price, seven to two morning line. It might even get bet down there. So, I'm not liking the price. I'm going to take a stand against Fire at Will, which is fine because Fire at Will's done enough for me. If I lose some money, if he beats me out of a Zacta combination or something like that, so be it. You've done enough for me, Fire at Will, and I will always appreciate that. Uh, gave me a lot of uh, cushion in the bank row and, and bought some nice things with it. Went down to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> for the uh, the profits from uh, Fire at Will and, and that pick four. Uh, so, I'm going to take a stand against Fire at Will, but I can't knock you if you uh, include this horse. It's definitely got a class, you know, racing against some classy horses. But the fact that it's this is dirt and um, the price, I'm going to take a stand against. Number four, uh, Fire at Will. Number five, always... Giraff, I don't think that's right. I, I was practicing this name, Gerifales, I'm pretty sure it is. I used to call it G Gerifales, but I think it's Gerifales, number five. 20 to one, it's going to be coming late. The uh, closer, one of the closers in this race, could be a factor in his actus, tries, supers, in your verticals, right? So I don't think it can win, but I think it can help beef up the prices, boost the payouts of your vertical wager. So include underneath. Uh, number six, King Ovation for Dale Romans, 15 to one. Another closer, it's, it, it had a decent, nice workout uh, on February 20th. But I think I'm gonna skip or pass on that, on that horse. Uh, number six, King Ovation. We just got a few more to go. It's a field of 10. So number seven is Tarantino. Tarantino, uh, along with the disappointing prime factor performance in the Holy Bull, Tarantino screwed me out of an, a winning exacta. Uh, I had a lot of horses underneath of greatest honor in that exacta, and, but Tarantino wasn't one of them. I'm not going to leave them out again. I think uh, Tyler Gaffleone's riding really nice now. He's, he's uh, been hot lately, so that's, uh, that's a factor. Uh, I think the running style, it's competitive at today's distance, so I'm, gonna, I don't, I'm not going to bet this horse to win, but I'm going to bet it to, or I'm going to include it underneath in my Zactus. Uh, number eight, greatest honor, what can you say, nine to five, Morning line favorite and deservedly so. Very impressive in the Holy Bull. Uh, it's, it hasn't done anything wrong. Very com consistent, competitive horse. 
It's going to be hard to beat. Uh, number eight, greatest honor. I love the trainer. Just seems like a heck of a guy that cares about his horses, does things the right way. Shook McGahee. Uh, so, so definitely this is the horse to beat. Nine to five, though, probably going to be less than that. The price probably isn't the horse to bet as far as a win wager, unless you're just super confident. But I, I, I like more odds as far as of uh, win wagers. Number nine, Tiz Tac Toe 30 to 1. Here we got another turf horse uh, that hasn't even been competitive on the turf. It's been racing in maiden races and it hadn't even been competitive there. So no thanks. I don't know what what's going on with this horse being in this race, but I ain't going to bet it. If you bet it, I would leave a comment in the comment section below as to why you're betting this horse, other than it just being a long shot. Uh, no thank you for the number nine, Tiz Tack Toe. And then number 10, Papa Two. Good old Papa Two. It was in the Holy Bulls well. Uh, early speed horse is drawing the outside, the 10 post, which is tough. So this horse, uh, the, the outside post, in my opinion, uh, have a disadvantage. You want to be in on the inside, I think. That's why I'm, I'm uh, pretty, pretty confident in the inside horses here. So you don't want to be on the outside and for a horse like that, this, that needs the early lead, that's its only chance. It's got a clear, which means get out front and get in front of all these other horses that are breaking from the inside. You got some really good horses on the inside. So I don't see that happening. So it's going to be very, very tough. Uh, but I'm still going to include it in my Zach is just in case it does clear and uh, can hang on. All right, so how am I going to bet the Fountain of Youth? I'm trying to do my best to contain my enthusiasm because, again, every single year, ever since I was a young, young man, I get excited for Gulfstream Park winter races and especially these big derby prep races that occur at Gulfstream Park, such as the Fountain of Youth. So I'm real excited to bet this race and to see if we have a derby, potential derby, con uh, contender possible possibly derby favorite horse coming out of this race so how am i going to bet it i am going to of course greatest honor is the the horse to beat for sure the number eight horse uh but i think the fact that that horse is a closer i'm not big on closers betting closers of the win they just have to rely on too much um too, too many variables, too many things have to go right for a closer to win, in my opinion. This horse is really good, though, and it can overcome that. Just like Zenyatta. Zenyatta was wonderful. It's great. One of the all-time greatest horses ever. But you, you, you're you rolling the dice. If it gets enough pace to run at it, the jockey times, the, it, times it right. Uh, Make sure that these closing horses don't run in any traffic. Get around the tiring horses. All that is enough for me to bet against greatest honor as a win bet. Because just to, if it was seven to two, four to one, heck yeah, that that's that's a good bet. But that ain't gonna happen. Nine to five, probably gonna be a lot lower than that. So I'm gonna prefer horses that draw better post, that are gonna be more out front which plays to, I think, what you want. And that's why I'm going with number one. Drain the clock. It's March Madness time almost. I think that's a good hunch play. But I like this horse's inside post position. I like the trainer. The trainer's doing really well. Should have this horse ready to roll. Five to one's a nice price. I'm sure it's going to be a little lower than that. So number one, drain the clock for me. Number two, prime factor. Hopefully it can redeem itself. Give me a little of my money back that I that it it burned for me in the Holy Bull. So those are my two top win contenders. One and two. Drain the clock, prime factor. I'm going to do some other things too, though, as Zactus, right? So one and two, the same, my win contenders, but over the one, two, three. So as Zacta Part Wheel, Zacta Part Wheel, one, two, over the one, two, three, five, seven, eight, ten. Again, I'm leaving out War Wheel, if, or was well, Fire at Wheel, not War Wheel, excuse me. If it beats me, so what? Made me enough money already, so I'm cool with that. Uh, 
But I think a good strategy in the fountain of youth is betting, you know, in terms of as active, is betting your best early speed horses or horses that are going to be up near the front and horses that are coming off the pace, your best closers, right? And so that's how I came up with those exact combinations. I think the one and the two should be out there near the front or on the front from a good pace position, saving a lot of ground with these inside post positions. And I think horses like the eight, of course, greatest honor, uh, the, the five Girafales or Girafales, uh would be some good closers to use. So again, uh, now one, one, one more, one more thing. I'm going to have a saver bet because greatest honor could be a great horse, a really good horse and could close in on this, this field. So I'm going to have a saver bet the eight greatest honor over the one and the two, my two top choices. All this is contend contingent on those payouts. So in summary, win bets, on the one for sure, maybe even the two prime factor depends on the odds. Exact is one, exact apart. We're one and two over the one, two, three, five, seven, eight, ten. And then I'm gonna have an exact to saver bet, the eight over the one, two. Surely one of those bets has to come through. But regardless, if I lose money, I don't care because I love the Fountain of Youth stake so much that leads up to the Florida Derby, which leads up to the Kentucky Derby. I love it. It's a tradition that I watch every year get excited for. So win or lose, I'm going to have a good time. Uh, but I feel pretty good about my bets. I just got to beat that number eight closing horse, greatest uh, honor. And uh, I think I can do that. I think I got some good contenders to do it. Hopefully I can cash, get some long shots in there for, the, for those exactas too to, to, uh, to make it a really good Fountain of Youth uh, day. So who do you like in this year's Fountain of Youth Stakes, the 2021 Fountain of Youth Stakes at Gulfstream Park? I would love to hear who you are betting. Uh, who you're going to pick, or maybe some of your tickets, your exactus. It's always fun to hear from fellow horse players how they're going to bet these uh, stakes races and these derby prep races. Uh, if you like this video, hit the like button. If you had not already, subscribe to uh, this YouTube channel, Weekend Handicapper, and hit that notification bell so you can get all the latest tips, tools, and resources to help you make money betting on thoroughbred horse races. And, and until next time, happy handicapping. Small wagering.